Bang. Bang! What is up, my pizzas? And welcome to the Keon New Age. It's still I like I liked it as much as I did with half energy. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. The audience felt sympathy. I think it, it needed to set in. What, what it Wait, is, is this the Bethesda conference? Hey! Oh. Absolutely, and we're going to get there. You heard her voice. She is the author of her number one best-selling book, Next Essential Crisis. Nexi, what is up? You butchered it. But Hi. <laughs> What's going on? What were you gonna say before you before you yeah. corrected yourself? Next essential. Shh. You heard his voice. <laughs> Actually, I'm just gonna throw a curveball. You haven't heard his voice yet because he does what a, a good panelist is supposed to do and waits until his formal introduction. Curtis the Hammer. Fisher, what is up? See, it's always easier when you've been on the other side and you have to do all the editing. And, yeah. you, and while you're editing, you're like, that <laughs> mother... I think we do that one more <laughs> <laughs> time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, like, I've been... Like, everybody thinks I'm so nice, but, like, you guys have no idea what I'm like when I edit. That's why I don't really edit anymore, because things have been broken, I've harassed people, and I'm done for now. <laughs> so, uh... And then our last guy, David Webb. What's up, everybody? I play by my own rules. No strings. <laughs> no strings attached to me. I play by Basically, my own. Ultron. Oh. Or, or Pinocchio, because that's what that reference. No, was it's from. Ultron. It's Ultron. <laughs> it, it, I'll, I'll tell you this. When, that was one of the things that got me psyched for Age of Ultron when they did the "I've got no strings to hold me up." I was like, okay, Disney, I get it. You own the Marvel now. <laughs> <laughs> but damn, dog, that's weird. like uber meta. Yeah. Weird, weird, weird flex, Disney. Weird flex. Weird flex, but okay. Uh, David, you were gone. You were out of commission there I was gone. for a minute. Uh, mm. Everyone was worried. How are you doing? You, you, your health okay? Uh, my health is okay. Was I gone on Saturday? I was here on Saturday. Were you? I was here on Saturday. Was I here? Yeah, you were here. Oh, man. Yep. Wait, uh, did we do a show? We did a show. Oh, I'm thinking Oblivion Comics and Coffee. We did our, our show over there yeah. at Oblivion. On and I was there for that, too. Oh. Curtis was gone. That's the one I was. Curtis was gone. Oh, people, my God. People get us confused all the time. Here's yeah. the thing. But we Nexus have to was here. Uh, Nexus was yeah. there. Nexus was there. Whatever. But yeah, right. you two are so similar. I, everyone is always mixing you two up. So. We have the same birthday. That's, That's why, like, I never take it personal if they're like, "Hold on, wait, you did that." I'm like, "No, that was Web." But we have the same birthday. No yeah. Worries. yeah. So we did our uh, show, our uh, trivia. It was Pokemon themed. Thank you to the group that showed up. Who won? The Pokemon got in second place and then there's a, a friend of ours from sacramento who's also a streamer yeah something uh, about mike north it was uh mm. i can't remember the name but it's mike, a long name lord zephyr you guys may know him in twitch chat he was talking some mad shit before the event like he he called his shot on all yeah, social media platforms he corrected us yeah our question yeah we yeah. got corrected well, yeah, that was tough. Then, uh, but they, they, he, he did what he said he was gonna do, and they got first place. So congratulations to them. Cracked me up about it. That was when Emma was grading it, and I was saying, "Hear her go, son of a bitch, Mike won." Yeah, <laughs> He's actually upset. Hey, I, I, I like his Thanos approach. He achieved what he set out to do. Damn. Now we just need to collect the stones, go back in time, <laughs> yep. give someone else the answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, not going to break the timeline or anything. Nah, nah, we're good. So thank you to everybody who showed up to that. We are still determining what our next one is going to be, but you can stay tuned to the social media channels of Oblivion Comics and Coffee, where if you go into their store and mention VGB at the counter, they will give you 10% off of your total purchase, which is pretty badass. So make sure you go into Oblivion Comics and Coffee, tell them VGB sent you, and uh, reap the rewards of that discount. Oh, man, we got a lot to talk about. It is E3 full motion. We gave you two weekend episodes, and now we're going to recap the things that we didn't get around to. There's so much. Is this more E3T? This is more of our E3T. Why the fuck you oh, lying? shit. Wrong, wrong <laughs> I wasn't here for the Sunday show. Oops. <laughs> wrong, wrong sound effect. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get right into it. So, E3... Oh, no! Oh, God! Oh, damn! What you playing? Uh, well, if you guys don't know, basically, that was the What You Playing theme song. We never know when it's going to play. 
Uh, but basically what happens is the podcast gods bestowed upon us a responsibility to gamers, to Twitch kind, to let you guys know what we've been playing to maybe inform your guys' future decisions and what you should play. Uh, we'll start with my friend across the table, David Webb. Man, what, what have you been playing lately? I started playing Fallout 76. Mm. All right. Crowd, I, what do you guys think? I didn't spend any money on it. I didn't spend any money on it um, before they boo me. It was free. Yeah, it's free. It, yeah, it's free this week. It's free so, this week. It's still free. So it's still free, yeah. If you're listening to this now, you can go download it and give it a, a shot. So what did you think? Uh, I thought it was okay. It, um, I, I liked the sped-up intro where you you awaken the vault, you do your character creation, and then you pretty much get outside the vault. Like, you could stick around and explore if you really want to, but if you want to get out and get going, you can. Uh, everybody I talked to that's been playing the game, they said that the community is their favorite part. Everyone's hella chill there. The community is awesome. Nobody's really dicks in the game. Uh, in fact, I played with Aaron, and uh, he's, I was like maybe 30 minutes behind him in gameplay. And he said that when he first got out of the vault, there's some dude that just randomly walked up to him and was like, hey, here's some free stuff to get you going, and like dropped like some higher level armor and some weapons and everything. It's like, okay, cool. I like this idea. So I start playing for a little bit. The first person I encounter is a dick. Oh. <laughs> he is high level. He's spawn camping like the first like the first major objective that you have to get. And then as soon as he kills us, he sticks around because we respawn in the same damn area. And then he comes and kills us again. And again. <laughs> and again. Until finally I was like, fuck this game. I'm out. What sucks is that they have been saying how much great the community is they even made a point to say that on the stage show and you know when it's a high level person Lies. this is not another noob because my instincts was like now it's going to be filled with free people so yeah. of course it's going to be garbage no, there's a counter if i understood what it was right there's a little counter um on the bottom right of the screen that tells you how many people are either I, I, okay i couldn't figure out if it was on the server as a whole or if it's just like in a certain radius around you, how many people are there? Yeah. But there's a kill feed in it. Okay. Uh, we kept seeing the same guy, uh, something monster, kept just killing people in one area. So we're like, all right, well, we're not going to go to that area. <laughs> I don't know why people keep going to that area, but we're not. We're going to yeah. still cl steer clear. So what, what, besides that, what what you did get to play of the game? I actually thought it was, it was a decent game. Um, I could see why... Like, not having a story would be frustrating, and I'm, you know, on board with them adding it now. Um, I don't think it's going to really bring as many people back to the game. My favorite part about that was, and I'm sure you guys covered this already in the other episode, but the favorite part about uh, that uh, announcement was how the two presenters made it seem, first of all, it wasn't the main guy at Bethesda. Nah, he's not going out there in front of, the, in front oh, of this yeah. crowd. Yeah. No. Tom yeah. Howard. Yeah. He's going to send out some other people yeah. to do this. <laughs> it's too risky. But he went out, but they come out and they say, so year one was all about breaking expectations yeah. and letting you build it. And then year two, we were introducing – I was like, no, bullshit. That was not the plan the yeah. whole time. No, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, are you going to play it again or were you one uh, and done? Maybe, uh, I don't know. I'm, Put I'm it this wait. way. Are you going to play it after the trial? No, I'm gonna wait and see what the what the quest when it comes out, what it looks like, and then I might pick it up because it's only 17 bucks right now, and it's probably gonna be even cheaper by that point. So, it, is it? And I think it's a Game Pass game, right? No, not yet, no. but I'm, it's only a matter of time. Dang, I got it for free, so I have a full unlocked copy of that game that I got when I bought my Xbox One. Oh, that's right. I installed the game, yeah, and then all like a month long, you know, battle about vinyl bag or canvas yeah. bags and shit. So I just kind of didn't play it. For those just purposes. out of uh, principle? Yeah, I just saw so many people bitching about, you know, microtransactions and how expensive things were, so it yeah. didn't waste my time. Curtis, what you been playing? <sighs> one thing and one thing only. And I was thinking about it. I was like, man, have I been playing anything else? Nah, I've been playing NBA 2K because I'm grinding on my character. And, you know, as uh, as you know, thank you to Jay Giss for putting out the word, but uh, the coach for the Kingsguard was looking for some people oh, um, to run to some what? scrimmages really? um, against the Kingsguard. Yeah, so I'm 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 probably not going to play anything else until some of these um, E3 games that I want come out because I am I am just about to get to 90 
probably tomorrow. So okay. yeah, congratulations! That's awesome. Appreciate it. it. Well, this is for the second time. Last night I got to ninety one on Switch. <laughs> now I got to get to ninety one on that. PS four. Yeah. Well, That's... now's the time to get in the game. Like now, you hear Curtis talk about it all the time, and there's no better time to jump in because it went on sale during uh, this week. Right? Yeah, it was three dollars on PS four. Jeez. Um, so you know NBA finals are almost over. We're gonna have a lull in basketball into summer league and stuff. So until two K twenty comes out enjoy 2k20 for or 2k19 for three bucks yeah, yeah. uh nexi what have you been playing i've been playing some uh animal crossing happy home designer Ooh, you nice. getting yourself ready yeah. okay I, that was one of like i i love that game when it came out um it happened like Three, three years ago, I think it came out, but I've been getting back into it. I want to completely rebuild the town because of some Animal Crossing New Horizons, which hopefully we'll talk more about during this. Yeah. Because I'm so excited. You get to build everything from scratch. Yeah. So and so basically, Happy Home Designer, but on an island. <laughs> and there's so many features of the game that they... Uh, took from Happy Home Designer that weren't in any of the other games and that's that's something I'm really excited about. Mm-hmm. So, just getting myself prepped for some Animal Crossing. We have 282 days until until March 20th. Let's go. I have a counter on my phone telling me that. That's <laughs> not surprising. No, not at all. <laughs> Court, what have you been playing? Oh, thanks David. Thanks for asking. I've been playing a lot of Overwatch. Apparently, I'm a full-time streamer now, everybody. I've streamed Jesus. like 3 times in the last week. <laughs> per, wow. Yeah, at least an hour. So Damn, slow down. I I was really slow I down, originally TQ. committed. To, yeah, <laughs> I originally committed to just like you know Bachelor. Whenever the Bachelor's on, I'll stream. Yeah. Uh, but then I realized that you don't have to stream with your camera on. There's no rule in Twitch, and I just started streaming Overwatch. Uh, whenever I would normally play, mm-hmm. uh, I just. Go live, no camera. If you happen to go in there and I see your chat, I'll chat. But otherwise, I'm just grinding competitive and, you know, having some conversations with folks. So it's been a lot of fun. No pressure. When you turn that camera off, all the pressure goes away. It just feels like you're gaming. Like, that's why I stopped. I didn't like streaming so much. You feel like, especially when a camera's on, there's like this, I need to entertain you. I'm worried about looking into the camera when I talk sometimes, you know, the self-conscious, whatever. Okay. And when you don't have a camera, all that shit goes away. Word. So I'm really enjoying it. Expect more streams from my channel, What's Up Pizzas. So it's twitch.tv slash What's Up Pizzas. And I'm just probably going to be playing um, uh, a, a lot of Overwatch because oh. I my main account placed in plat for this season, like okay. middle plat, and my games have been so good. Once you get out of that rut, that gold hell, mm-hmm. and you start getting to a level where people actually communicate and are swapping characters and generally want to win, mm-hmm. it's been oh so good. Sounds fulfilling. Super fulfilling. Um, so yeah, that's that's what you're playing. We we appeased the gods, and now it's time to talk about E3. So we got to see the rest of the stage shows. The if you guys listened to the last episodes, we did. Uh, what have we done so far? Xbox. Xbox and... It was on one. Monday. Bethesda. Bethesda. Yeah, and we did a lot of pre, pre-E3 pre tea. But now we're going to get into the real tea. We had... Let's just start with Ubisoft. What did we think of Ubisoft, guys? Say it, Nixie. Go Ubisoft. ahead. Ubisoft. <laughs> you say Ubisoft? Yeah, she did. <laughs> oh, awkward. Oh. I, li- I like her argument though, when she asked us before the show. Did you say Ubisoft or Ubisoft? Ubisoft. Okay, then is it Uplay? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> is it Uplay? Okay. Uplay? All right. Well, so there's, a, there's a dash. Like it's you to mean you and then play. <laughs> Anyways, we got some interesting stuff from Ubisoft. One of which I think would be the most interesting, which we might as well just start with, is Watchdog Legion. So they gave quite a bit of stage time. I don't really... I'm not a fan of Ubi's, like, stage show, like, ethos. I I like Nintendo and Xbox where it's, like, 90%, like, trailers and video content and then just talking kind of when they need to or a few targeted times. This one felt like they were just talking way too much about games that weren't quite as significant. And the one with Watch Dogs was a watch it was like 20 minutes so what i think the difference and it's like that's that character for ubisoft 
Yeah. Um, but I think the difference is like you have like Nintendo, you have Xbox. They come out, they're putting on an like an entertaining show. It's a stage show. Like it's there for entertainment, and that's they're trying to capture the audience and keep them like keep them there. The the Ubisoft is more of a press briefing. It's exactly what it's called. It, there, it's like a presentation. They're there and they're explaining everything that went into the game. Almost like they're trying to pitch it to investors. You know what I mean? Yeah. It seems a little old school. Oh, it's 100% I, old school. I feel like all of the ones used to do that. Like, And that's kind of like the carbon template. But yeah. anyways, they showed us a nice long video. There was a lot to infer. And then they ended up you know, kind of uh, you know, confirming what you saw. So basically in this version of the game, you get to play as anybody. Any NPC that you find on the game has his own name specialties uh and you can take that person and bring them as a part of the resistance to fight against the man uh what did you think about this one curtis just kind of the trailer uh ubisoft what game what game <laughs> watchdogs <laughs> watchdogs oh it looked great um this is burnt all right no. No, 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 oh, 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 Watch Dogs? Okay, then I didn't even see it. You didn't see this one? <laughs> nah. Next year. I, I, I'm not a really Ubisoft fan. I like Ubisoft, but I don't really like Ubisoft. Nexi, what did you think of it? I liked it. The part that really sold me on it was uh, the fact that you could play as an old lady. <clears throat> yeah. Like, it's just, it's so different. It's so cool to me. Like, I... There, there was something so funny about watching that trailer and then seeing that old woman, like, controlling that drone. And then she turns around and she has this mask on and then she starts beating up those, like, whatever the hell they are. Like, yeah. It's so awesome. And then when she tries to go over that rail and it's just a very slow... Just a slow ball. It's so it's so good. Those, <laughs> she, she walks, she's almost limping. Yeah. <laughs> her ultimate ability is fake a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I think her, uh, like, that was pretty darn cool. And, like, yeah. uh, I, I did find that fascinating about the first one, too. Like, if you hold up your phone, you could basically hack them and see an entire list of their specialties or, or their social media if they're cheating on their wives. Like, it was really kind of cool yeah and i remember being amazed like oh that that's kudos to them for going through like every npc and making sure they had something interesting this takes it to the next level i'm just worried about that as your selling point because i'm sure they have uh, several move sets mm -hmm. you know they probably have male who can fight male who's a nerd old lady female MMA fighter, right? female, you know, whatever. And so they have a few different ones and then they're just going to kind of feel randomized, you know, like yeah. it's going to lose its luster a little too fast if they didn't put enough variation in it. That's the one thing scaring me about it. But uh, overall, I think uh, they did a pretty cool job with that trailer. Like yeah. permadeath is the thing in that, this. And yeah. that's cool. And then you just go and you pick from another operative in your resistance. Yeah, and what was, like, the little detail I noticed is that later on after they, you know, because they started the mission with the dude and he got killed while he was trying to rescue the kid. And then the kid at the end says, like, hey, where's that dude who tried to save me? And the character you were at the moment said, oh, he didn't make it. I thought that was a pretty cool little if then program to yeah. say that later to make it feel more succinct like a like a grand story. Well, I want to know is uh like uh, inevitably is going to be some sort of leveling system. So, if you if you start out as one dude and you level up this one dude to 10 mm. and then say you go to like e like even if you're not die, you don't die, you just pick another operative to control is that a different level? Do you have to level up that one? So, because my initial thought was like, okay, so like in the beginning of the game, let's like recruit a bunch of people. That way if you die, then it's not a big deal. But if you spend all this time building up one guy and then you transfer into another person and they're not built up yet. It gives it, gives it weight. It gives it weight, yeah. 100%. A game that already does this is uh, State of Decay 2. Um, oh, I played a little bit of that, yeah. Yeah, that one is uh, it's it's uh, included in your Games Pass. Yeah. And it's basically permadeath. You start, it's zombie survival. So uh, think of, you know, Walking Dead or something. And anybody you meet in the world, you could bring into your compound. And it, they have special skills that make them unique. But in that game, you have to send a lot of people out to go get supplies and That's things right. like that. That's right. 
and they can get jumped by other humans. They can yeah. find a swarm of zombies, and if you lose that person that you've invested all this time into, they die. And yeah, they're gone. So it's a bummer. Um, any final thoughts on that one before we move on to the rest of uh, Ubi? No, uh, I I need to see it. I need to see more, but that's probably gonna be a buy. I think so too. Uh, the next one we had from them that looked interesting was Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I'm so ready for this game. They uh, they tried to recreate a little Keanu magic by having John Bernthal come out. <laughs> I think it was up there. <laughs> it, he, he wasn't. What, what made it different was he, he was more put together than Keanu. They put that whole thing together in 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They were like, shit, they got Keanu. Yeah. I know, my cousin's friend <laughs> just met John Bernthal, you know, the Punisher. I bet he'll do it. And they programmed it overnight, and there he goes. Yep. No, but he showed up with his doge, which was very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and very twitch. Very twitch. He then, uh, he, I, I couldn't tell if he was reading the prompter, but he was into this shit. Yeah. I, I've seen this dude talk at panels. He's a like a hard mother effort. Like, yeah. you know, this dude doesn't fuck around. Is like, he a veteran? I don't, I don't know if he is. He kind of carries himself. Like he is. He's an actor. He but he's an actor, yeah. exactly. <laughs> he punched Jonah Hill once. So well, he, hey, there you go. He got that going for him. He was, uh, you know, he just seems like, I don't know, relatable dude. And he goes up there and he's really trying to sell this game. And what was kind of interesting is we've played Ghost Recon forever. Like, and they're good. They're quality shooters, story driven. This one, they're really putting emphasis on the, the bad guys. Well, I think it's because this one... So, did you guys play Wildlands? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Wildlands, you're ghosts, and, like, you're in this open world and stuff like that. And so, I think what they're doing now is because it's... That was such a good game. Like, it, it came out to, like, really underwhelming results. But, in my personal opinion, it's such a good game. One of my favorite games. Um, that it was such a good game already. What else could they do to improve upon it? And they kept all the critical things... And they, you know, added some more. And I think that's the main thing that they added is now this time, this enemy that you're fighting, they're you. They were, they're ex ghosts and they went rogue. Okay. And so you're fight. It makes it like, it takes it to a different level, which is, I think why they're marketing the, the enemy so highly. Ghost Recon has needed help with its enemies. Like the yeah. first one I played advanced Warfighter back in the day. Mm -hmm. like, it, I remember it being a little controversial because you're the enemy were Mexicans. Like, okay. Like those were the big terrorists. You're yeah. Going down to Mexico, and it was just I don't know. It's usually in America. It's like oh, they got to be terrorists. Or right. Something. No one says okay. They're Canadian. <laughs> you're gonna go, just go into an airport and slaughter a bunch of Canadians, and you're gonna have fun. Like yeah, I don't no. know. It was it's kind of weird. Well, like Wildlands, similar as Bolivia. And you're fighting a you know massive drug cartel in Bolivia. Yeah. And Bolivia was pissed. In real life, the country of Bolivia was <laughs> yeah. pissed. Nobody wants to, you know, <laughs> games are too real. Yeah. Uh, Nexi, what did you think of Burnthal and talking about Ghost, uh, Ghost Recon? I know nothing about these games. And I personally, like, I don't know. I didn't pay very much attention to it. It wasn't something that I was super interested in. But it was in. I don't... There was a dog. Okay, the dog. The dog is all that matters. There we go. That's it. The we dog, know, the we dog know who is the really real stole MVP. the show, right? Yes. <laughs> bam, bam, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the dog was, was their Keanu. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, Just Dance 2020 had an interesting... Uh, stage presence as well they started interesting is a word for it they did one of those like it starts as a video and then it becomes real life type mm -hmm. of thing so they showed like a cut scene of these people like i guess characters within the game and then they just did like a live demonstration where the people dancing looked nothing like the how you dance in that game mm -hmm. like the game you can i've seen people just cheese it you just move your wrists a little bit it does yeah. not resemble dancing but they put out like a full choreographed thing they went between like a Taylor Swift song and then uh, what's the group, the K-pop group that they, uh, Blackpink. Yeah, Blackpink. But yeah. that was a Taylor Swift song in the beginning. That was was it? it Panic of the Disco? Was it? Yeah. yeah. They're all in the same bucket to me. <laughs> when you're this old, uh, any interest in Just Dance? Anyone? Nope. I'm gonna get it for my kids. Oh, well, I'll play that. it. I go. will. I love it. Just Dance. There we go. I, 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 I <laughs> it'll well, be okay. Just Dance. Okay, Just Dance. That's right. I, I almost got it mixed up with Dance Dance Revolution. Dance Dance Revolution all day. Just dance. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I'll get it for my kids, and I'll make myself look, look like an idiot in front of them. They'll get some laughs out of it. 
Yep. And and basically these games are just like expansion packs anyways. They, like there's not they didn't really go into depth on super new features or anything. It's mm-hmm. just more songs, more more of what you love. Where? Uh the next one and uh, there's only one big point to hit on this stage show. Square Enix. They came out and it was a snooze fest. It was very resident sleeper if you're watching the Twitch chat and then they showed the Avenger game trailer. The one that we last week were all excited about. It was the yeah. one thing we were like, we haven't seen this one yet. This is what's going to blow us away. You got it. It's in your court. And I was underwhelmed. I was whelmed. You were whelmed. That's I was a, whelmed. That's, that's an improvement. Curtis, you, did you see this one yet? Um, yeah, I was whelmed. Um, it, like, it, it started off like, okay, okay, there's something here. And then it was like, okay, or this seems like an original story. I can get behind an original story. Oh, you're in San Francisco. I'm not far from San Francisco. I can get behind that. <laughs> and then it literally, like, it went, you know, I gradually went from, like, three to, like, six. And then it just, like, stayed at six. It just stayed there. So, yeah, I was I was very whelmed. Was it was because it of their lack of gameplay? Um, the lack of gameplay, that's something that always kind of gets underneath my skin, but it was, um, it was kind of more like the, the, the story. Like I, I ended up like it started off being interesting. And then once I really got into it more and, you know, Cap's dead and this and that, I was like, eh, okay, that's whack. And then I saw like the models that they use for the different characters. And the yes. only one that I really liked was uh Bruce Banner. Everybody else. I didn't, they I didn't were, really we, like the they models. were kind of, they were almost like, who is it? Um, I saw a meme that was basically like it was the stunt doubles. Oh no! Like, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, totally. they, they made Tony Stark look like Dave Grohl. Yeah, was yeah. what it was. Like it was, it was they. That's getting the most flack, and I think it's rightfully so because they've been pitching Avengers, you know, mm-hmm. right along the same time that this movie's coming out, mm-hmm. and so there's yeah. kind of like an expectation of it's going to be them. Yeah. You see who got to who voiced uh, Iron Man? Uh uh-uh. uh Nolan North. Okay. And so he tweeted out, I am Iron Man. Oh, I was God. like, oh, damn. That nah, was good. That's a, that's a fire tweet. Yeah. <laughs> but they they really should have, if they couldn't get the license. Oh, just like Special Cases is saying here in chat. If they couldn't get the likeness rights uh, to the actors, they should have at least made them look more like the comics. Yes, 100%. I've never agreed with Special Cases more than I do right now. That's true. And again, Ruru2 in chat nailed it. Walmart Avengers. Yeah, yeah that's what <laughs> it sure. is. It's like, sure. the, it's like the knockoff action figures. Yeah, which yeah. in contrast to, we could skip around just for the sake of conversation, but we got to see Ultimate Alliance 3 yeah. in the Nintendo presentation. Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. That one actually well, That's more really comic-y. Good. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're not going to do it, yeah. And I like the, it was almost cell shaded animation, but not white cell shaded animation i liked it and we got like a larger than life in in this here, here's a good thing i just came to me now like in the square enix one uh it seems like they're grounded in reality and trying to make it gritty kind of closer to what we get in the movies you know like they're trying to get us attached to the characters and now tony has a beard because it's dramatic yeah and this other one was straight comic book lore oh it's yeah it's like you got the 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 black order and thanos thanos and they're getting Infinity Stones, and Magneto has one, and Explosion, and all, Catchphrase, and it was just yeah. fucking fun. Curtis, what do you think of the contrast between the two? Um, I mean, one did it right, the other one did it all right. <laughs> like the, I mean, I think you can, to, to me, you can see who cares... I feel like who who cares a little bit more, and, and maybe that's not the story. Like you know, like I said, maybe at the you know at the back of it, you know, it was cheaper to get the likeness of the people that they found. But I don't know. I, I just I, I I love that world. That's like the the cartoons and the comics, and the comics and the cartoons are like where it all starts for me and where it all ends for me. And the movies are great, but like you know, I don't need it grounded in reality so much. I just, I I just need the grand epic tale. I need to be able to play whatever character I want with all of my friends, you know, doing these crazy power ups and team moves and all that stuff. Like that's, that's, that's what I, that's what I want. That that's, it's funny that they, when I was watching the little, um, the Nintendo thing, when they were sitting down with them, the treehouse thing, is that Mm -hmm. what it's called? And, uh, and they were like, yeah, you know, like not many other games have like put everything all in together, you know, like this since the last alliance. And I was like, well, actually, that's not true. The Lego game has been dope. 
Every time they That's do the true. Lego Mar- Mar- Marvel game, they do the same thing. They put all the characters in there. They um they put all the villains in there. They give you a great story. And that's why the Lego games, I feel like, are consistent with how well they do. Because they always go into the lore. And they go into the essence of what it's all about. And then from there, they just you know slap that Lego sheen on top and make it fun. And that the Ultimate Alliance has been the same way with the previous game. Which, even though the graphics were what they were it, again it was the essence like i can just get on there with leak and me and leak can be on the ds's and we can just go ape and that's what this game is yeah did you ever uh beat lego marvel lego Corey? shut up david <laughs> <laughs> game's the hardest game ever created <laughs> fuck battletoads this game is hard uh and then It'll also the other thing from square the other thing from Square <laughs> Enix was, uh, of course, they showed uh, a lot more of that Final Fantasy VII remake. <laughs> so they're giving it HD. We Something. already know. Um, we we already knew this was coming for a long time. And this is the one they're also making episodic, I believe, right? Don't you have to buy it in pieces? Is that is that is that how oh, you say I it? think like, I think they are. Is that, is that the one? Chat can correct us if we're wrong. But a lot of people lost their shit. It was really cool to see, you know, the cloud from modern age, you know, in- incorporated into it. They revamped the battle system. Uh, but Final Fantasy, not my cup of tea. Anybody else in here play uh, the Final Fantasy game? I played, um, what's what, what's the newest one, 15? I couldn't I couldn't even tell you, man. That's the how, one that's that came out, the one that came out and they were like, hey, like, this is the least connected like this is a good jumping in point if you never played final fantasy so i was like all right i'm gonna play it i didn't play it for very long <laughs> i just I don't, I don't know i, I i'm not a, it's turn-based i'm not a turn-based game player and ah i think uh the, the i also got off on a really bad foot because there was the lightning series which came out i don't know if that was 13 maybe and it had a few different versions and the one i had was like number two finest lightning returns again or something and it was on rails like he, the combat was pretty good it was a little okay. action based but the whole game was on rails and i was playing i was like oh shit final fantasy i'm ready to get into some story you know let's go let's do some open world exploration yeah you know character building stuff uh explore my habitat no yeah. this thing was on rails and i yeah. Uh, and it's not no, no no fault of the Final Fantasy original games. I'm sure they're fantastic, but they just missed me. Yeah, I th- I feel like Final Fantasy is kind of one of those games where like if you didn't grow with it and you try to especially hop into some of the previous games or, or even a little bit with the newer ones, I, I just don't. I I think you're gonna have a difficult time connecting. That's kind of how you know, just like what it, it is with Harry Potter and whatnot. Like if you didn't grow with it. Um, yeah, that's you're true. Probably not gonna get it because it's like me. I don't really give a damn about Harry Potter. I give two. <gasps> yeah, exactly. And, and my and, and my other half here, my other <laughs> birthday boy. You, you see his reaction. Yeah. So appalled. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, what was it? What was the other word? Uh, f- dumbfounded. Dumb- dumbfounded. I'm shooketh. Shook. <laughs> Shook. Uh, besides that, now we can get into the good one though. So there was. I mean, th- those were fine. I think overall, this E3 was pretty underwhelming and i hate to be that guy because i was really trying to be positive about it like i don't think the microsoft one sucked like everyone is saying i'm reading a lot of like you know we grade them all and they didn't give anything like higher than a b Mm. everything gets you know d's and f's right but i i would say microsoft was good i'd give it a solid b you know but yeah. overall, this event has just been pretty underwhelming. I would say it's it's just been whelming for me. It's kind of just been like, all right, it's nothing sticks out with it. Like okay. when when a actor or actors that are presenting the game stick out more than right. the majority of the games in in the whole E three press briefing series. That's when you know there's not really exciting games coming out. I mean, it's, you got Cyberpunk 2777. 27, yep. That game looks cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm one of those that's excited about uh, the new Wildlands game, but like, I don't think that's a majority. I think it's probably you know a smaller number of people. Um, and then there are other games that look cool that I'm you know excited for. But overall, it was kind of like a ah, okay, this was the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Luckily, Nintendo was here, and they uh, they were another highlight. I'd mm. say Microsoft and Nintendo were definitely the yeah. best. In last year, 
like you might think, oh, obviously they're the you know the big companies, but I think last year Bethesda threw down pretty hard. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, and I think they f- fell super far from <laughs> from Grace. Like that that was a very big fall. But Nintendo came back and they were bringing the hits because they started off strong mm-hmm. with some Smash news. Yep, they gave us uh, the hero from the Dragon Quest series. Right. And uh, I don't know much about Dragon Quest. I know it's the person who designed the characters was the same uh, artist that designed Dragon Ball Z characters. Yep. So for the people who I saw online that were saying that Goku couldn't fit, you know, just because, you know, the the character model would just look weird, that kind of disproves that. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. Sakurai came out and said that that basically, in so many words, that the D, the property owners of DBZ don't want to don't want to play with without you know basically us paying a bunch so that's why his world can't can't get in it has nothing to do with the design of the characters and it's funny when it was rumored that it might be uh, Dragon Quest people I was like y'all better enjoy this because this is the closest y'all gonna get to Goku because if Sakurai said it it's not gonna happen and it's about money then Goku ain't getting into this game mm. yeah yeah but uh yeah I mean I'm for people I never played Dragon Quest and that's something I've ever been interested in but for uh, people who do enjoy it. Like I'm stoked for him. It kind of reminded me a little bit of um of like the additional incorporation of all the. How do I lose it? Uh, Fire Emblem characters. You know okay. they kind of set it up like that. Where with a few of them, it's one. It, it well with Martha and Lucina, it was a little bit like that. But I like that they're gonna put them in there, and then they put a bunch of different ones. I guess from different characters from the Dragon Quest game, and then from the different Dragon Quest games. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's feeding that audience, and yeah. and, and what it's gonna result in, cause just like with Persona. Hey, we brought these people in, and then what's gonna happen? A bunch of people are gonna be buying it. A bunch of the Smash streamers are gonna be streaming it. Yep. I saw Zero playing Banjo Kazooie earlier today, which I guess we'll get into that wow, here. Wow! So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So big, big news there. They started out the gates pretty strong, and then they did a subsequent like basically this must be a bigger deal with the publisher of Dragon Quest because uh, Dragon Quest Eleven, the mm-hmm. definitive edition, is coming out. Yep. And I think, like, every game in the past from Dragon Quest will be made available. And that was kind of a theme for them. They kind of went through and just announced a bunch of franchises. And yeah. was like, basically, we have all their back catalog now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, it was with that, uh, with the, oh, gosh, the Mana game. Oh. Uh, Trials. Yeah, yeah Trials right. of Mana. Yeah. They have, yeah, like, the Star of Online. Mana, all of those games are <laughs> right. no, coming not. back. Yeah. I'm actually yeah, really Fancy excited Star to try too. those. Did they really? Fancy Star Online 2, yeah. For Switch? Yeah. Sick. I missed that part. Wait. Are you doubting yourself? Yeah, now I am. Back right. check. Yeah, because... That I may have been during the Xbox that conference. That might have been big news. <laughs> um, what else did we get to see thrown in there? Link's Awakening. Yep. So, I kind of... And this is another one that missed you, me as a child. Okay. But apparently, this was an incredible game. I watched mm-hmm. the, the video game uh, Historian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gaming yeah, yeah. Historian. He yeah. did an, ep- an episode recently about when they announced this remake, kind okay. of telling the story of the developers and how... You know, the first Zelda was good and all, and then there was a, a developer who had all these ideas for new mechanics, like mm-hmm. bombs on arrows and all sorts of cool shit. Yeah. And uh, basically Miyamoto, uh, who I think was making the shots mm-hmm. at that point, told him, no, like, it's my, you know. You my to, creation. Yeah, yeah, my creation. They got the, the mechanics work that are there. And so they ended up scrapping all these new plans. Mm-hmm. And then something happened. People got pulled to other projects. And then this developer and a few others just thought, like, hey, let's stay after work and start working on a Zelda game. Mm-hmm. And it, they showed, people were like, what are they working on? And they got showed around. Mm-hmm. And they're like, this is really fucking fun. Let's build this. And they actually made the game. So there's a really, like, fun, cool history about the people who made uh, Link's Awakening and uh, it kind of just builds off of that. What have you anybody experienced that game, or and what do you mm-hmm. think about the remake? I did. I did not play it. That was one of the Zelda games that I didn't play. I have a coworker Link who games. who has bought that game on multiple consoles. It's just been like remade or remastered mm-hmm. or whatever over time, yeah. or ported over. And like that was the big announcement for him. Like Dope. he was stoked mm-hmm. about Link's Awakening. Like he was in my office today. Just like talking all about it, <laughs> even more than Breath of the Wild too. Even he, yeah, he even said that he was. <laughs> I, I like Zelda, uh, I like Breath of the Wild, but Link's Awakening is where I'm at right now. Well, this one, like, and how they kind of justified all the weird mechanics and crazy stuff in that game because they also like borrowed other uh, Mario characters, mm-hmm. like uh, the Chomp guy. 
Oh, the yeah, Chain yeah, Chomps yeah. and the Goombas. Chain yeah. Chomps and Goombas make an appearance in this game. Yeah. That's my new band name. <laughs> Chain, Chain Chomp and, and the Goombas. It's <laughs> <laughs> no. my ska band name. <laughs> yeah, but, the, but it's because it's a dream. Like, it yeah. takes place in, like, a dreamland. Uh, Nexi, you are uh, a, a Zelda nut. What did you think of this? I am very excited to play this. I never got the chance to play uh, Link's Awakening originally. That was one of the few Legend of Zelda games that I never played. But... I, I love the style of it, first off. It looks so adorable. And I, I heard a lot of people actually complaining about the style, being like, oh, it looks too kind of like almost claymation-y. And I find it very, like, very sweet. It kind of does bring you into a little bit of a dream world, and I like it. Um, I've seen a little bit of gameplay uh, from the original game, and... I'm just really excited to see how all of that looks on the Switch. This is kind of cool. It's I would be assume gorgeous. for you because do you have access to an original Game Boy even if you wanted to right now? Yeah. Oh, you do? I do. So, okay, <laughs> I was thinking like how more. David was yeah. saying, you know, he couldn't get into a game because, you know, it felt dated, right? Yeah. Like you play an older game and it's hard to get back into. Yeah. So, Going that far back and trying to enjoy a Zelda game, I feel like is intimidating for a lot of younger people. So the fact that they're making an update version for this Switch might be that opportunity to play this one, you know? Yeah, I could see that. There's, because of how, like, far back, and I, I even tried playing the very first Legend of Zelda game, and jumping into it is so different from, because I started out with um, Ocarina of Time, and then Majora's Mask on the N64. Those were my, like, first Legend of Zelda games. Um, and, like, it gives you so much story, so much to go off of. And then when you start the first Legend of Zelda, you're just in it. You're just there. And I'm like, I have no idea where to go. I have no idea what to do. Why are these things in the water shooting me and killing me so oh, easily? Oh, boy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Tutorials <it> <laughs> didn't really exist too much back then. You were just yeah. thrown into a game. That's what the back of the yeah. box was for. <laughs> you pick up or that. The, yeah. The the book, the, the pamphlet. booklet. Yeah. yeah. You got a booklet <laughs> that told you what buttons to push and like some storyline written in there. Mm. And then you just, okay, I guess I shoot this thing now. Well, I guess this, I guess this the, is my life now. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is this is reality. So yeah, yeah. I can see I can see that. It it can definitely be an overwhelming experience, but with other like not not too far later uh, did those games actually start becoming a little bit easier to to kind of understand and play and get into? Um, but so many people just think, like, anything before Ocarina of Time is kind of, like... Ancient. Eh. <laughs> like, hey, they're kind of right, though. Well, <laughs> but yeah. doesn't mean it's not good and it's fun, because those, exactly. those are the Zelda games that I got into. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. are the ones that, like... I don't think people truly give uh, give give a chance. I would say, and they should. Uh, yeah. We'll just go from one Zelda to the next because, in uh, you know, also in this presentation, we learned that there's going to be a Breath of the Wild sequel, yes. which had some people kind of upset. Ups upset. Why would you be upset at that? Well, okay, one person was upset. Like I said, I've been a, a full time streamer recently, and uh, <laughs> Sergeant I don't think that word means what you think it means. Sergeant Squiggles came in chat today, and he said, "I need to get something off my chest, Corey, and I need you to talk about it on the show." And he is upset because he says, out of all of the Zelda games, there's never been a straight sequel. Like they usually all kind of go way different, off the rails. Like they're all so unique and different. And that the fact that they're just going to do a straight sequel upset to him. Was Majora's ah. Mask technically not a straight sequel? Because Majora's Mask, it's the same link. It's the same timeline. He's just going to a different land. He's got to come in here. Uh, Squiggles, come in here and defend yourself. I, I put your... your I, was, <laughs> I was making the argument for you. And I can't... I have nothing to back it up. I can, I mean, I, I can see that. But uh, I honestly, it looked more like a DLC to me at this point. Exactly. I think it's just a massive DLC. It's yeah. running the same engine. I'm sure it's going to... We didn't see any gameplay, so no. it was just a, um, a cutscene. What What did you pick up from that cutscene? I I think that that... Like, there's so much to, to take in with that. Um, first off, can I make a little mention of... Zelda has short hair now, and I'm living for it. Um, <laughs> oh, they <laughs> Link's hair, hair. Link's hair is longer than hers now, and I'm just like... I'm here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it's very interesting trying to figure out, because you see this um, 
this weird kind of mummified dude who's sitting there. And, and my prediction of that is that that is Ganondorf. That is Ganondorf's body as Calamity Ganon had risen out of him in the previous game. And you're going to be dealing with whatever the hell he's going on with now. Um, but <laughs> dealing with this shit now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's... Uh, you, you see something at the end of that trailer um, when it does a big, like... You, you see the landscape and then you see all of this like dust from from Hyrule Castle and then it slowly starts rising up and that reminds me of Ocarina of Time. Okay. Because that happened in Ocarina of Time. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with it and quick, quick prediction. I think it's going to come out uh, best case scenario um, holiday 2020 or spring 2021 simply because it's using the same engine well isn't and, that considering that isn't that too far out though like that's a long time well you also have to consider well i don't know i don't know if it's too far out because we're only seeing that it's like kind of started production and yeah. just enough so that it's confirmed and um like we we are allowed to know it but um it, when you look back, it, again, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask came out only a year after because it was using the same engine. Yeah. Um, and I'm only giving this game uh, the time that it needs because Nintendo has recently been like fully addressing um, uh, the the crunch of making games yeah they came out with something too we'll, we'll get to that one in a yeah. minute actually let's go there next because uh you know this is another one that i think you said made you cry yes the, the animal I, crossing trailer i cried during the animal crossing trailer <sighs> and during their 24 minute treehouse live um and and doing a quick tie back to the to the crunch doug bowser he had made a statement about how um, uh, Animal Crossing, We the only thing that we saw from the new Animal Crossing game, which was finally titled New Horizon, um, the only thing that we had saw was back in September, September 13th of 2019, um, with Animal Crossing 2019. Basically all we saw, but now they're releasing it March 20th, 2020, um, and in his statement, he was saying that they want to avoid crunch because they they want to give both um the players of the games a happy experience but you need to give the developers a happy experience by balancing uh your work and your life that's so, kind of like so, Nintendo. it's, it's kind of so like kosher awesome. meat right like yeah. don't stress the animal out before yeah. <laughs> yeah. you kill it yeah. and then it's more tender jeez that's dark yeah. dude. you're so welcome it's it's really um because they came out with that statement i cannot be as much as i am it's actually really funny that so many people are impatient about this Animal Crossing game when the point of Animal Crossing is to be patient yeah, about your, you about your town grow developing. And, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so, hey, that's what time traveling's for. Right. Um, but it's... it's uh, <laughs> I don't care how long the wait is at this point if they're really treating their development team well because that is something that doesn't really get brought up much. Um yeah. When it comes well, it to like has anything. Been, it's been coming up a lot when it's a problem. It's not too often we get to see it when it's in a positive light. Yeah. Because usually the game comes out and then a bunch of, you know, employees start telling all. You yeah. Know, so um, this, is, this is known Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> what they gave us was, uh, I guess, it's on an island now? Yeah. I don't. I, I know nothing about Animal Crossing besides that they I just made a mobile version. What What is the point of it? What's the difference between Animal Crossing and The Sims? You cross animals. Uh, animals no. Animal no, Crossing no, is going from... Not. Animal Crossing is going from one part of the land to the other. You're crossing the land with animals. Okay, uh, for the real version, Nexi? So anyways, <laughs> Animal Crossing, um, you're basically starting this new life. Uh, it Well, in the previous main series titles, which there have been uh, four main series titles uh, dating back from, from the GameCube uh, of Animal Crossing population growing. Um, so you're escaping your life, which is very true to real life. You're escaping it by going to Animal Crossing. You're, you're joining... Um, this town of animals and you kind of just live this uh, real-time life simulator. 
So like, wait, so what, so what differentiates it from the the Sims so much? The though? the difference from the Sims is that um, you're an animal. You're, no, no, you're a person. Wait, you're a person. You're a person Where's living amongst animals. animals. You, your vill- your villagers, or in New Horizons uh, case, islanders are the animals. Um, Do you talk to the animals? So, yeah, you Do can they talk, talk to back? the animals. Yes. You understand them? Yes. Hmm. So are you Ace talk- Ventura? Yeah, Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> um, yeah, what so, are we talking here? Is Ventura Doctor Doolittle? What kind of science are we is talking? It telepathy. I, How are you communicating with these animals? I feel like uh, Animal Crossing is more of a kind of wholesome, uh, more of a kitty version of Sims, while also kitty version of Sims. No, oh, no. Um, oh, I see. What well, Sims going for. is more of like a bizarre somewhat very little true to life like that you have like real finances i mean tom nook does put you in debt like your initial bill in animal crossing is forty nine thousand eight hundred dollars well bells um but to put that like to kind of make you guys understand bells uh, a single apple can sell for like only a hundred bells <laughs> So. Wow, you're going into <laughs> yeah. economics, dude. I didn't to, ask make, for... to make you understand bells, yeah. an apple, <laughs> an apple is a hundred. It's bells. equivalent to a hundred so, bells. It's not let apples me... to apples here. It's apples that's, to bells. That's, that's what you need to understand. Let me put this away. You idiots will understand, all right? <laughs> Everybody knows how much an apple is, right? A hundred fucking bells for an apple. So I really like Animal Crossing. You know what right? would get me to play this game is if there's a twist, and the twist is is all of the animals used to be people too escaping their life and they're longer there in the Whoa. area tim nook turns them tim into nook. animals what's I, his name I, I like tom, this. tom cook tom nook his his name is a is a pun on tanuki who's tim cook <laughs> I, I think he ran for president uh um, tom cook tom nook tom nook tom nook is an evil wizard that turns people into animals the longer you're in the area. I'm sold on no, your I version. No, I would blame Please that more on this. Rover I'll, I'll than Tom person. Nook. But um, there, there actually is a character who, his name is Zipper T. Bunny, and he is like the, the Easter Bunny, quote unquote, because they don't like celebrate... It's just called like the Spring Festival or something, I think, but uh, or Egg Day, I think. Um, I like what Blood Ocean said right here. It's more cute than Sims. Yeah, exactly. That's all we that. needed. Yeah, that's all we needed. I'm sorry that I really love this game. What can you do in it. this one that you can't do on the other ones? What was the? Why were they so excited about it being on an island? Um, on the island, it really looks like um, you're you're creating everything from scratch. They're integrating some crafting that you started doing in Pocket Camp. Um. <laughs> You, it, basically, it's it's that you are the. Um, <laughs> what are you laughing at me for? <laughs> I forget you. I'm laughing at the joke out of my head. <laughs> Can I share. <laughs> on the island, it's not apples that you trade with. It's coconuts. No, there are apples on the island. <laughs> <laughs> the inner yeah. Animal Crossing inside of Nexus will not allow such foolery. Yeah. David. No. What's, it, what's it called when you're trying to There's no convert Tom money? Foolery. When you're trying to convert money? Yeah. What's that called? The, Conver- the different conversion? Exchange? Nope. Nope. The exchange rate. Boom. Exchange. The exchange rate. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Exchange um, rate bells to so apples. Anyways, the difference if we're comparing it to New Leaf. So, New Leaf was the previous main title series on the 3DS, Do you turn which any released leaves over six in that? years ago. Jeez. Um, what? Six years? Do you turn any leaves over in that? You actually do turn a new leaf because you are the mayor. So that's different from... Yeah, everything you idiot. Is, is a pun. <laughs> You're so, the mayor. You didn't know that? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm the mayor, I'm being you're not, okay. All right, I'm David, g- you're not allowed to ask questions anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, it, it appears that you're starting a new life on this desert island and you're not already coming to um, a pre-existing town. You're creating everything from scratch. You are uh, crafting all of these items, which a lot of people were very iffy about the crafting, but it is it is optional in some cases, it looks like. So, um, but but that's the main difference, is, like between this and any of the other um, main, uh, main games of this series yeah. is that you are completely starting fresh starting the way that you want and it's so 
customizable. Okay, and so much so it made you cry. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anybody else uh, interested in this game, tons more details will be coming out soon. The other one before we get to their final piece was Luigi's Mansion 3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That actually looked pretty darn good. I, I was about I to say. It, yeah. it did look pretty good to the point where I'm actually considering just getting it just to stream some more, like to have an excuse to stream some more Twitch stuff outside of uh, Ultimate Alliance, of course. Yeah. Did um, it look pretty good? <laughs> oh <my> Luigi! Good. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank the, you. Ki- the kids liked it. The like kids it. like it. When's Luigi going to come to Smash Bros? Not before Waluigi. <laughs> better damn not come before Waluigi. No. If it does. I rage. I think what the thing that looked most fun about this was the multiplayer aspect. So Where, basically, yeah, Gooigi sure. is ba- it's like a playable avatar. He has different abilities and weaknesses and strengths than Luigi, and you can pass the Joy-Con over to your buddy, and it can it's like a good puzzler for two people. So I think mm-hmm. that was probably the most um, feature of that game that I was most looking forward to. When they talked about the online multiplayer, I was like, come on, guys. Seriously? And then they showed it, and I was like... Oh no no okay I get it like yeah. this could totally work you this work together fun. yeah it was it was a what hell yeah 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 it what? totally was yeah yeah <laughs> it was, no, no, it was that kind of moment, moment. Yeah, yeah, okay let's go <laughs> I like it was a it. what hell yeah what moment it's like <laughs> I, I would say it's kind of like Call of Duty Zombies in a way where you know you're just working together and each round is going up another level Word. in the mansion. So I'm sure it's going to get extremely difficult. One of those games that, you know, it's going to be pretty easy to learn, but very difficult to master. Yeah. I'm not so mad that they killed Luigi now. I'm fine with it now that they've shown me the game. (laughs) There's so much good fan theories out about Luigi and how he's actually been dead all these years. Yeah. I'd recommend it go again. But they're just theories. Sure. Luigi theories. Sure. Uh, Last thing, the big reveal for them i think that was trending number one on twitter was another smash character mm-hmm. finally banjo kazooie joins let's the cast. go they've been needing for like i'm sure a lot of the characters they've been adding from the you know eastern cultures are big and get people really excited but the western characters went like a sonic for us you know one of those big franchise types of characters to bring into Smash, those are always fun to get. And I feel like yeah. that's kind of the level of character we got uh, out here with, with Banjo. What did you think about the original, that video that they showed? Uh, it was, it was a, it, I mean, that's how you bring in a character. That's how you do it. Nintendo does it right. They, they, it's the passion that they put behind, like, the, you know, whatever that character is or that brand. They bring, and it, like they said, like Masahiro Sakurai said, they bring the whole world in. I'm not a, I, I Banjo Kazooie was not something that I played a lot back in my 64 days, but I mean, it looked so much yeah. like when I was playing when I was a kid. I like, I already kind of knew because the leaks had come out so when it came out i was like okay yeah they did it they made it official but i have to tell you like at first i was like okay yeah they did it and then the more i watched and i saw the move set and i saw um like the uh his level i forgot what you call the uh the actual round what is it called the spiral something the what yeah uh, his 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 level from the game oh i don't even know yeah it's we'll we'll fact check it later yeah but they brought all those. that stuff in there and i yeah. was like dang they, they, they just they just do it so right yeah i I think the other, the only ones I would have been more stoked about would have been like a Crash Bandicoot, which we'll probably never see, or Spyro the Dragon. But oh, Spyro! Well, we still, I think we still have three, three more DLC announcements. That's oh. not everything. It's going to be a total of six, if I remember correctly. Master Chief. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? I mean, I okay, hang on, hang on. You scoff, but is it so out of the realm of possibility? No, the only I thing I want to see about so. Master Chief is when he takes off his helmet. It's Keanu Reeves. Oh, <laughs> Now you've crossed the line. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Too much. I think uh, Spyro is kind of a potential for maybe one of those last spots because that's one of the other smaller announcements they made is that the whole Reignited franchise series is coming to the Switch. True. I could see uh, that, yeah. So they all, they have talks. They brought him in, and maybe that was one of the conditions. You know, we'll, we'll make Spyro. Uh, he'd be a fun character in that. Um, did, what did you think of his kit? They kind of showed uh, some of his moveset. He yeah. looked like some ranged stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he you looked- shoot uh, mm-hmm. Kazooie. You could shoot uh, eggs at Kazooie, which is great because that's how it is in the game. Although in the game, I don't remember you taking Kazooie off your back and and moving her her legs like a gun. 
I think she just shot. She just popped up out of the backpack and shot eggs. <laughs> but uh, either way, it's cool that they include that mechanic as the, the range, the range option. They're super good about staying true to those characters, like yeah. almost to a fault of breaking characters. Like they will give you what you know of that character, like Bayonetta, for example. Like yeah. just in the animations that they use and. Uh, even in this, uh, with the character we talked about, the hero, mm-hmm. uh, I guess a big part of that game, you know, was the menu system. Okay. And yeah, so, just like Krom, I think, is that the other yeah. character where he has like a little... Oh, um, um, oh no, not Krom. Uh, Shulk. Shulk. Oh, yeah, where yeah, well, there's like a menu option. Yeah. 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 Monados, yeah. yeah. So, in this one, uh, you know, the, the hero from Dragon Quest is actually going to have like a little tree at the bottom of stuff that you can choose to change the way you play. Makes sense. Uh, they did a great job with the video, though. It took place in the same... Uh, it was in Donkey Kong Country. Yep. Basically, it was the exact same as um, the K rule when it yeah. was just King DK and Diddy. Yeah. And, you know, there's this big noise outside. And they run. But now K rule was already with them, <laughs> yeah. just sleeping. He was a guy on the couch. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And then they hear a crash go out. Oh, it's actually fucking uh duck hunt. Duck, duck hunt yeah you know pretending and then they drop in with the actual reveal Manjo. which was perfect too because like speaking of the move set how how like the i think the core concept behind how to design the move set you know was kind of already put in place with duck hunt that's true yeah, duck, duck yeah. Hunt ha- you know the the combo the the duel and you know obviously it's you know a bird and a, and a dog it's just this time it's banjo. a bear a bear yeah yeah, yeah. california bear um so yeah that was the highlights i think from nintendo anything uh any final thoughts just kind of on e3 as a whole david uh nothing more than like what we already said this year just seemed kind of um underwhelming it seemed like all the games that came out with the exception of like like breath of the wild 2 i don't think anybody saw that coming but everything else was all games that we kind of knew about in one sense or another. It was yeah. just we got more information on some less information than we probably should have at this point. Yeah. You know, like uh, Halo. I'm sure you guys talked about this on the Xbox episode already. Yeah, but yeah, we got till holiday 2020. Yeah, It'll be next E3 before we get anything of substance. And and we don't have yeah. There's no gameplay at this point, and it's a year and a half out. Like it, it just kind of seemed. Like the uh, gears, I think did the same thing. There was no gameplay in the gears, and that game comes out soon. And that game comes out in yeah. months. Throw together a cinematic and then start developing the game quick. Yeah, do it. Yeah. It's like, oh crap! E three is when? Anybody <laughs> know John Bernthal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, yeah. Uh, I think overall it was, it was okay. I th- I think uh, th- what's happening with E three is starting to kind of remind me of what started happening with comic book conventions. You start getting all the actors and you know and, and and all that different stuff to show up and have the faces and, and I'm not against it like I you know I, I I like that it has helped to build it to where it's semi sustainable but at the same time it's like you, you, you same thing with conventions comic book conventions you notice like if you go they're starting to get away from the essence and what's starting to appear a lot a lot less are comic book sellers and 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 whatnot so people can collect so. E3, you know, I'm like all the different cinematics. I was like, okay, cinematic, cinematics. I want to see more gameplay though. Like y'all need to start focusing on the games a little bit more and maybe the marketing. You got to market your stuff. It's a business, but maybe pull back on the marketing. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's so much expectation around it too. Like there's been so many great E3 moments, for example, and you know that's where you're supposed to go to be ood and wowed and stuff. And so then people try and force those moments with yep. information that's been leaked, or maybe we gotta have something big, so let's just drop Elder Scrolls Six, even though we know it's not coming out in ten years. <laughs> right. So they just there's like maybe this added pressure that makes them make adjustments and decisions that probably are counterproductive. Yeah, I mean, you know, and you're and you're bored if you have one because you know they're going to be asking those same things. But that's why you got to have good leadership to be like, hey, we're you know we're going to do our best to make sure we have some of those out wow moments. We're going to put something in there that's cool that should you know bring some some eyes to us. But if we put out like you see what's going on, if we do all the wow moments and then we put out a game that's not ready to go or wasn't we didn't put enough care into all the money that y'all want to make we ain't going to make and then you're going to be having a different conversation with me so you know let's make sure that we that we get going on the games 
uh, over everything. What did you mm -hmm. guys think about like overall themes? I remember last year, no microtransactions at the end of everything was <laughs> was big. Yeah, and I think Microsoft had a clear theme. Everything's basically available on Games Pass. Mm -hmm. Get Games Pass. You know, subscription gaming is the future. Yeah, just like Ubisoft. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that was kind of this year's theme was looking past gaming as we know it. I think I think that's accurate. Uh, they Xbox did that, and then they talked a lot. Of, well, they talked a decent amount about the X Cloud service. Yeah, kind of. You know, like this. This is where this is what's happening now. This is where we see the future. Bethesda had their thing on how they're going to make it even better. For people yeah. who are programming stuff, but this is a weird one, man. Because then they come out and they put that idiot on stage who says Fallout Seven Six is getting a fucking battle royale, baby. Oh my god, that guy was so oh. awkward. Oh, I, my heart hurt. Like, who told this guy that that's what we needed? So awkward. The board. Yeah, I guess so. It was. You know what was crazy is uh, during the Xbox One. I don't know if you guys talked about it, but they announced Minecraft Dungeons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was the crowd was silent. I actually kind of looked like a fun game. I might play that game, but the crowd was not impressed. I, this yeah. has been a, a thing forever. I had heard from uh, people who've gone to those that uh, Microsoft do usually doesn't give out alcohol at theirs, and PlayStation would always give out alcohol, and then it would, they say it was loosen it would loosen up like the audience and yeah. some are more rowdy. I think. Uh, Bethesda was giving him crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> just that, no, it was just that Maybe. one dude in the front. No, there, no, <laughs> that it was Heisenberg. just that one guy. <laughs> there was that one guy who was the Heisenberg that was louder than everyone else. But overall, yeah. they would just say anything or imply any silence, and then it would get filled with just thunderous applause. What's you know? what's that drug in uh, Fallout? <laughs> Which one? Uh, oh, uh, uh, is it Radix? Is it Rad? It's the one that you get like you uh, in Fallout Four. That one person in the town gets addicted to it. Mm, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, yeah, that's probably what they gave <laughs> That's where the joke was going. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good joke. Uh, there ends our E3 coverage. Uh, you know, there will be more stuff trickling out from the event. Uh, we can talk about this for a, a hot second, and we can discuss it more in the after show. Because if you listen to the podcast on, uh, you know, iTunes and, and stuff like that, uh, we do the show live on twitch.tv slash video game underscore bang where we can explore topics even more directly chat with you guys and uh, it's a lot more interactive experience but one thing we should just touch on in this show would be Dr. Disrespect Tw Yikes. famous Twitch streamer he kind of got this big persona with the mustache and the mullet and you know he's got he makes millions he's got all, all this stuff he was the face of Twitch at one point he Jeez. did his first ever uh, IRL stream where he put on the backpack and streamed his experience. <laughs> his first and his last. His oh first. yeah. So I saw somebody had retweeted, and you know how on Twitter you could see tweets from like 19 hours ago, 20 hours ago. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So I'm scrolling through my feed this morning, and I saw somebody had liked or retweeted his going live for the first time, and it was like 19 hours ago. And it was really weird seeing that because I'm like, I know what happens. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know what that... It's almost like when you see a movie with an actor who's, like, dead. And, like, this is weird because I know they're dead, but I'm seeing them right there. Yeah. That's what that was like. It yeah. was it was terrible. And I'm really interested to see, uh, see what the hell Twitch does about it. Well, we're talking around it. Uh, what happened was Dr. Disrespect had a backpack on and decided that it would be a good idea to stream in the public bathrooms. At E3. Because that's a good idea. I don't know what... And, and what's crazy was, was he... Actually, he wasn't wearing a backpack. No, he had a cameraman. He had a cameraman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if he had to use the restroom, tell the cameraman to wait outside, I don't know if it was part of his bit. I just saw it on live stream fails with the audio off, basically, yeah. just mm -hmm. to see what had happened. Just like a quick BRB. Yeah. Like, just do... Pull up a quick screen. Like, but instead, and in those restrooms, there was a minor visible at the urinals. So... There's this gets worse. There's rules, people. There's, yeah, there's a we live reason. in a society. As if, as if live streaming in a bathroom wasn't enough of a crime. A minor was there. Bro, I'd have so, cu cussed him out right there. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, cut the, bro, I give a shit the, who the, you yeah, are. Yeah, I don't give a damn who you are. Could have been Prince. Yeah. Prince uh, yeah. Prince. I'd have been like, well, I'd have been like, Prince, can you please turn the cameras <laughs> off, please? 
But yeah, Doctor Disrespect. I'd have been like, "What the hell are you? What the hell it is sounds, wrong with you?" I, I don't want to. I don't want to name names, but it definitely sounds like another um, larger streamer that yeah, we all know. Well, it sounds like something that they would have done. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking. But about. I think even they like they know the system so well, and they're you know they they're in it just to make money, even though it's through outrageous things. They even know that. You that's, think that's yeah. you think that's a line they would even cross. They know the rules better than anybody because I mean, they are true. tippy toe dancing yeah, on them all right day up, yeah. every day. True. That's fair. So this guy, you know, just thinks he can do whatever he wants at E3, yep. jumps right into the bathrooms, gets. Uh, banned fairly quickly and typically I'm one of those you know dudes who's like you know you know rules it's kind of there's there's a blurred line there I don't know about that kind of ban that's a little extreme but that's a mm. law yeah and there's you know, who knows what could have happened or not happened or been shown or wasn't shown or you know yeah. that, that's a high risk area where you go for privacy you mm. know for do your business yeah a, a lot of people um well a lot of people, as in a lot of Dr. Disrespect fans out there, were talking about, um, don't blame him, the ban is unnecessary, blame oh. the cameraman. And I'm like, okay, no, because it's not it's not simply the cameraman's fault, because Dr. Disrespect wanted him to follow him, and could have said, hey, probably not the best idea to, to come in here, you know? And um, it's still Dr. Disrespect's channel that showed this content and he has to face those those consequences of of his actions yeah i mean let's be real so, dr disrespect wouldn't be like wasn't wasn't like hey hey hey, man you can't come in here yeah wait outside i'll be back yeah, he was touring He's around character. <laughs> yeah it was part of his entertainment thing that he was doing uh he actually got banned from e3 yeah overall good uh, so he's not, and you got to think of it like from E3's perspective, they already got like a huge PR team and, you know, we've run small trivia events and you know what our nightmare is, you know, yeah. like there's tons of stuff that can go wrong. The stakes are high. People paid a lot of money to be there. Uh, the last thing you want is a controversy of some idiot who took a camera into a bathroom and some kid exposed himself. Yeah. Like it could have gone so much worse. This Absolutely. was the best ending you know, just to get his ass out of there. Twitch give him a ban. They'll probably pull it back later because of reasons. Or, or maybe he'll go to Mixer reasons or YouTube. Reasons as in money. Yeah, exactly. Just... So that's a whole nother <sighs> thing. But E3 did the best thing that they could do. and Just get yeah. his ass out call it ban. But we can talk about this topic more and the ethics of it in the after show. Uh, but we got one more segment left curtis's comic corner what did oblivion give us this week thank you uh and shout out to oblivion comics and coffee because they always hook us up with comics to review for y'all we got uh two solid ones this week um <laughs> and kind of a controversial one for me one that's not so controversial um silver surfer black by donny cates oh yeah uh, it's been a minute since i seen a silver surfer comic period and the art looked very interesting so i'll pass it around Yee. i everybody knows if you've been watching the show when it comes to comics specifically i am a huge fan of the cosmic universe um i i love the the concepts of the beyond um the very fabric that our existence in the universe that we live in are made out of and then you place us within that and you know the questions that we have you know uh, the existential crises that that we may face you know with uh you know w when we are asking what are we within you know this great space that we live in and occupy and donny cates gets straight to the heart of it with uh, silver surfer most of you guys probably know silver surfer is a herald of galactus so he was going to galactus was going to devour his world norin rad aka the silver surfer um you know basically sacrificed himself and said allow me to be your herald i'll go find other planets for you to devour so you um so you don't destroy mine um, and then where we are in the story now is uh, Norrin Rad was with the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy and some other people when Thanos' will was being read um, in the Guardians of the Galaxy comics. The Black Order showed up, started booting everybody around, um, and uh, threw Silver Surfer and some of the other hero heroes into like this... Some other dimension. <laughs> you know how these comic books go. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, but, the, but uh, like I said, I love the sci-fi element of it, and I love that like we find ourselves um, with uh, Silver Surfer, and 
he you know he's like i'm the one i have cosmic awareness i wield the power cosmic i am the one most equipped to get us out i'm feeling defeated but i can't allow how i feel to dictate what the outcome of this is and me saving these heroes because maybe i'm the herald of galactus and maybe you know the jo maybe i have a dirty job but these people are true heroes beta ray bill and all those guys so i need to do what i can in this situation to make sure they survive so they continue to avenge um, okay. people so I thought it was great. I loved um, all the questions and the the, uh, the monologue that uh, Norrin Rad, aka Silver Surfer, was having the whole time. Donny Cates has been someone that I've kind of been back and forth with here and there, but this character, the way he wrote it, and he wrote it, I feel very much like Jim Starlin, who created Thanos, Gamora, and Drax. Very similar to how he wrote the old Silver Surfer run that kickstarted Thanos quest that turned into Infinity Gauntlet. So for y'all still coming off of the movies and feeling high on it, you want to get into this and get back out in, in, in the cosmos. Uh, so that book's going around for everybody else to check out. The next one, I am not the biggest fan of Brian Michael Bendis. I'm not. Uh, there's been some things that he's done that were really good, like his Daryl Devil run with Alex Maleev, and then there's been some things that have been other utter uh <laughs> basura basura <laughs> for, for like, <laughs> word <laughs> All right. for lack of a better term like civil war 2 which was just terrible yeah uh, that was god awful but this and, and i'm also not a fan of what he's been doing with superman excuse me um when he's when he came to dc but i'll tell you what he built up to this event called event leviathan and i really really dig where he's going brian michael bendis he he's terrible when it comes to continuity if you give him really established characters like superman most of the time he's gonna deconstruct them and break them apart and do what he wants to and forget what the writers right before him even did but when you get him with some lesser known characters or if you allow him to buck continuity for an event you get some good gritty stuff it's a return of him and alex malee from that classic daredevil run in Mar marvel knights it's gritty. Um, it's uh, it, 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 it's almost kind of like Reservoir Dogs in the sense where like the whole issue takes place in one room, and it's just a bunch of really good dialogue, a bunch of people talking back and forth, trying to discover, like trying to find out what the other one knows. Can I trust this person? Can I not? I love the fact that this Leviathan character kind of comes in, or this Leviathan organization comes in, blew up Argus, blew up. Um, Freaking! Oh gosh! Uh, uh, took out Amanda Waller, Task Force X, Task Force X, aka Suicide Squad. Kind of took out all the major players, and Batman and uh, and Lois Lane go. And there's one survivor there. I won't say who who it is, but if you like Wonder Woman, check it. Check it. <laughs> check this out. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna say your name, but rhymes with Schmunder, <laughs> Schmuman. So it, it's not Wonder Woman though. I'll say that, but it's someone close to Wonder Woman. Um, and they go in and they're interrogating him and it's and like they're trying to put together these clues and Lois is a reporter So she's really good at getting clues Batman shows up. He is the world's greatest detective um, In the midst of him showing up. I, I, I'll, I'll drop this one Green Arrow shows up Who's a bit of a detective and is good at gathering clues because he's on the street level the question is in there So basically this group this, you know terrorist group, you know uh, is so secretive and has taken out so many of the he heavy hitters so quick that the world's greatest detective have to pull their resources come together and try to figure out what the hell is going on and of course superman's not here because he's on another planet he doesn't do thinky things he doesn't do thinky things yeah. he does punchy things exactly um and and hearty things that's you why know, we love him yeah. indeed so um i will say that event leviathan number one as much as i can't stand majority of brian michael bendis's uninspired self-congratulatory writing my goodness get this damn book it's good right. and uh and the of course, the Silver Surfer Black. Pick that up too. You can get them from Oblivion Comics and Coffee. And by the way, like Corey said earlier, if you mention Video Game Bang, get ten percent off. That's get, significant. I'm saying that's ninety dollars. You spend a hundred dollars, and you really only pay ninety nine. It's almost free. Yeah. If you if you use David Webb's uh, version of free. If you mention David Webb, they add on another five percent. <laughs> but but. If you mention Alpha, mention Alpha David. Mention Alpha David. Mm. Everything's free. Everything is free. You just go in, you say, "Hey, Neil, Alpha David." <laughs> <laughs> Tweet us what happens when you do that. 
Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode of the Video Game Bang. Uh, it was a good one. It was a wild E3. We had Keanu Reeves kind of stealing the show, unfortunately. Like, unfortunately. Nice if, I mean, it'd be nice if a video game stole the show. <laughs> nah, it's E3. Keanu in the video game stole the show. Yeah. So, uh, you know, tell us what you thought of E3 on our Twitter, at Video Game Bang, or hang out with us on Wednesday and Saturday nights on Twitter. Twitch.tv slash video game underscore bang. And if you're in the chat and you enjoyed the show, you can go listen to past episodes on our website, bgbstudios.com. You can subscribe on iTunes and give us five stars, Stitcher, or even on Pandora Radio, Audio Boom, all of them. And if we're not there, if you are like, hey, I searched for video game bang on my podcast app and it wasn't there, you tell me and I will get us there. It's not that hard. I can do it. I, I have the, the, the power. Uh, Curtis, what's your stream schedule been looking like? What are you doing? It's erratic, because, you know, uh, sickness and stuff. Yeah. So uh, there's going to be some 2K in there sometime. I want to get these two fellers gotta, back yeah. in there with me, because I got my cousin now, and I got uh, Malik online. So let's let's go let's go bang some heads and some 2K. And let's get Emma involved, too. I'm sw- I swear. She dunks on one person. She will feel the power. The game is only three bucks. Like, Emma needs to buy this game. Come on, Emma. Uh, Nexi, are you on a, a schedule for your streams? At this point, I've kind of given up a schedule, and I I just stream whenever whenever I kind of feel like it. Nope. I, I tried doing a, a heavy-duty schedule of streaming, like, 40 hours a week at least, and that was too much. So fun. now I'm just kind of here. <laughs> David is uh, on the fence. He's coming back, but he may be joining a new platform. Well, what's the, what's, what gives, man? Blast uh, I, I'm just looking for a different audience. Uh, make a move. I just want to make a move. Make a move. See, change the scenery. Change the scenery. See what happens. You know, so you're down between what mixer and Facebook gaming. Oh, really? Why? Yeah. Facebook uh, gaming. You want your grandma to watch? You know, you know what? They're the only ones that replied to me on Twitter. Because <laughs> they got nothing better to do. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> to no me... One, okay. They're retired. <laughs> yeah, no one's watching the Twitch thing. They, like, they have the, the Facebook streams. Yeah. What did they say to you? They're just like, because uh, I tweeted out, like, which one should I do? Should I do Facebook Gaming or Mixer? Us, please. And they tweeted out, they're like, well, we're not biased, but since we're in your mentions, uh, we think we, you should pick us. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, no, seriously, I, I said that kind of half-joking because the only other time I streamed on Facebook... It tells you, like, your family members, because that's what Facebook is typically for. Right. And my grandma would legitimately just that's be in right. there asking me questions. When Yeah, we used to stream the show on Facebook. Yeah. And I'd be in there, and your grandma would be asking questions. She'd be getting mad if I made fun of you. And Yeah, Grandma Bling. Shout out to Grandma Bling. Uh, so, yeah, when, when do you think, when's your rough schedule when you're coming back? Uh, I, don't, I don't have that down yet, but uh, maybe next week sometime. All right. And then I've been streaming a lot more on my channel, What's Up Pizzas, on Twitch. A lot of Overwatch. No cameras, so you don't have to see me. So it's like it's just like the podcast. You hear my voice, and uh, you get to see me play some Overwatch. But that was the show for Curtis Fisher, the real David Webb. Nexus was here. My name is Corey Sang. You've just been banged.